Hello and welcome back to part three of creating sports graphics with Boris Continuum with me, Ben Brownlee from Boris Effects. Uh, we're going to be carrying on a pace now with our project. We've created the 3D models, so we're going to be looking at how we add textures and materials to our shapes. And even though we're primarily going to be working in Type Studio, we are going to dip into uh, Photoshop a couple of times just to create a couple of the textures up. All right, so let's take a look at materials and textures. Right, let's add a little bit of personality to these rings, shall we? Okay, and we are going to use textures. So at the moment, all of these rings have the same default material attached to them. And materials is a way of describing what these 3D objects are made of. So it means how is it going to react to light? How is it going to react to shadow? How is it going to react to other elements within the scene? Uh, and the easiest way of, of looking at this and thinking about this is actually to come into the window and go into material styles. Uh, and I have my material styles up here and I'm just going to click and drag and move this over into this area here so we can see it a bit better. So we can take a look and we've got a large number of presets that we can start working with. So we've got, you know, brushed metals, we've got animated liquid textures. We've got fabric textures and if I click and drag on the material balls there, you can sort of see how things are looking around that ball as well and how it reacts to the light in the scene. Okay, so let's start off with our inner ring, shall we? And let's find something that we can make this out of. Uh, I'm going to go with brushed metals to begin with. Let's try and find something in, in black and white. And let's take out a ghost white here and see what we can do with this. Uh, and if I just right click and apply or just double click, you see that's updated the material on the inner ring. Let's turn this to 100% so we can see this a bit easier. I'm also going to turn the preview quality onto high now as well so we get those edges nicely anti-aliased. Okay, and if we look at our controls as well, we also have material controls up in the top. So with my inner ring selected, I've got apply materials equal to one, which means that I'm applying one material to the entire shape. If I turn this up to two or three or four, we can have separate materials for different elements of the shape. If I do uh, apply material four here, for example, and let's open up our inner ring. This is where things start getting a little bit fun as we start to delve into these. So you can see with the apply material set to four, we have a material for the front, one for the extrusion, one for the bevel, and one for the back. If I take this down to three, we now only have materials for the front, extrusion, and bevel, down to two, front and extrusion, down to one, just says the front. What this means is we can choose how much customization we want to put onto these different elements. So in this case, I'm going to change the extrusion material now instead of having a brushed metal why not have a crystal instead and i'm going to choose a ghost white crystal there and just double click on that and now you can see well if i hadn't zoomed out at that inopportune moment you can see that i now have a different material applied to the front and also to the uh, bevel and extrusion and that's exactly what i want I can come in here, I can come sort of further down. Let's fit this back up to 100% again. Um, what if I didn't want this to be white at the front? Well, I can come in here at the moment and we can have a little look at what actually makes up this material. At the moment, it's being made up of a bump map and a reflection surface. So the texture itself, the front of the surface itself is still being controlled by uh, the original color that we had previously. But we have a bump map. Let's zoom back in to 100%, see what the bump map is doing. Just zoom into 200%. So what the bump map is doing is it's taking our flat surface and using an external file to push these elements up and down. So if I come up and we have our bump strength, I turn that up a little bit, you can see the higher this is, the bigger the indentations are in the, um, in the surface here. 
So this is a really nice and cheap way of getting a huge amount of sort of organic texture, organic structure into a model without having to go in and model all of that shape, which would be just, you know, a huge amount of time. So it's very common practice to use a nice bump map instead to give us this kind of, uh, this kind of structure. So if we look down here, we've got two files. We've got one for the bump map and one for our reflection map. So we look at the reflection. Let's come down a little bit further and have a look at our reflection. So we've got reflectiveness, which we can make our surface more or less reflective. And the reflection scale. So we can sort of scale up and down that reflection. It sort of simulates, you know, uh, if it's closer or further away from us. So let's keep that around about there. There we go. So now as this moves around, let's just solo out that one layer by just turning off the other ones. You can see that as that moves around now, we're getting a reflection of this other scene. And this scene we can either control with reflecting the scene as we actually have it. So if I turn on my other layers, we're starting to reflect what's happening in the uh, in the rest of the in the rest of the scene there let's turn that off i don't really want to do that in this case because i just want to use this channel texture this D this uh this strange land file as my reflection type and i can come in just by clicking on the icon here come to image file i can choose up another scene as well so if i wanted a uh, rough desert for example that's going to give me a different reflection than these strange lands that we had previously and if you have your own dds files to use uh, your scene files there you can use those as well of course so that's that's all well and good but what if i wanted to actually change the color on the the texture here as well well let's come up to our texture track and i'm going to change the type the material type now instead of just being bump and reflection i'm going to change this to texture bump and reflection so what this means is now I have three channels available to me. I have one for the texture, one for using as a bump map, and one for using as a reflection map. So let's turn my uh, bump map conversion to normal map so that we've got the bumps going up and down. I can take the bump strength down quite significantly. And let's have a look at what that's, where that's taking. I've got metallic brushed metal as my texture map. So I'll go to image file here. You can see I've got a, a, a good number of other image files that I could use. Metallic Chrome, there we go. So that's given me a different look completely. Or what were we using before? We were using uh, metallic brushed metal or metallic heated metal, weren't we? But what if I wanted to give this a color? Well, that's simple enough. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna just copy uh, where this is in the Explorer. You can do the same sort of thing with uh, Finder as well. I'm just gonna uh, copy that. I'm going to pop into Photoshop and I'm going to open up the file and I'm going to just paste in that there. Let's have a little look and let's come into metallic heat phase. There we go. Open this one up. Looking kind of nice. Okay. And what I'm going to do with this is come in and just use an adjustment layer and add a hue saturation over the top. Click this onto colorize. Uh, and let's get this one a nice red. So let's saturate this up. Take the lightness down. Desaturate. That's too, too, too far. Let's try and find the balance there. Somewhere around about there. Let's, let's say that's working. Go save as. And let's come into here. And I've already got one saved, but I'm going to call this one uh, Metallic Heat Phase Red. Two. Let's save that. And back into Title Studio. Let's come in and we'll find that same texture, which is there. And there we go. We've got that as a nice, nice red now. I like that. So I can come back into my texture bump reflection, that materials uh, track, and maybe change up the bump map if I need to. Change up the reflectiveness, maybe, if I need to. 
Let's zoom that back out to fit to 100%. Let's play that back. And as that plays back, we can see whether we need to do anything else with it. Um, I probably like the reflectiveness up a little bit more, actually. That's cool. And we can also, up, down with the um, highlight strength and the specular strength, we can also uh, change how this reacts to lights as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll leave those just at the default values, actually, for the time being. So we won't get too too much into that. Let's turn the reflect scene scale up just a little bit more. Okay. Cool. And if we decide we need to change the color on this a little bit, um, if we need to make this a little bit richer, it's actually very, very easy to do because we've got this as a, a separate file. I'm just going to pop back into Photoshop. I'm just going to turn the saturation up a tiny bit, hit save, back into Title Studio. And then the only thing I have to do is go File, Reload Files. And this forces uh, Title Studio to just um, update the, the file cache again and just reload those in. So you can see the changes straight away. Okay, let's come into the middle ring, see what we can do with this one. There we go. And cool, let's check out the material. I'm gonna apply the same material to the entire shape this time. And I'm gonna have a look one more time at the crystal textures, I like this. Uh, I might even just go with that ghost white one more time. That was a nice, a nice texture there. I think the bump map is a little bit too strong. We zoom into 100%. I like how it's looking, but I think that's just a wee bit too much. So let's open up the layer. Let's come to our come to our material layer. Open that up. Oh, and if you don't see the material layers, there we go, the material tracks. We can turn that on and off in the timeline. It's very important. If we've also got this smart view. If we have the smart view turned off, it just explodes into a whole mass of things that you, you know, you can change, but you probably don't want to change at this uh, particular point in time. So if I turn smart view on and turn my uh, material tracks on, that's got me covered for everything I need to do right now. So let's come in, turn on my bump reflection, and I'm just going to take that bump strength down. There we go. Turn my reflection. So oh, my reflection scales up at 10, which I kind of like. Got decent reflectivity. I like that as well. I think we'll leave everything else at default. Cool. So we've got our red. We've got our white. Let's come into our outer ring and let's do something blue, shall we? All right. So let's look at the outer ring now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually have the outer ring layer selected and change my materials to two. So they have a separate one for the front, separate one for the extrusion as before. And let's come in to the extrusion and I'm actually, I'm going to use that same ghost white crystal there that we've used on the other ones because I kind of like that again. And I'm going to come into the brushed metals. And let's find Maybe just brush metals, black and white, see what we've got here. Maybe take a look at the ivory. And then, oh, actually, let's come up to the front material. Double click on that, see what we get there. Interesting. And really for the, for the texture on this one, I just want a blue version of the red texture we had on the inner ring. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's do that in Photoshop. I've still got my red texture open here. So the, uh, only thing I have to do is just change the hue, find a hue that I like. Around about there. Saturation, yeah, saturation pretty good actually where it was. And I'll go save as. A metallic phase blue two. Cool, back into Title Studio. Let's find that. So let's look at the material attributes again. Change this one more time to texture, bump, reflection. It all changes completely. Let's come in, change the texture here. Image file, let's find that texture. Blue 2, there it is. Okay, let's come into the thing there and zoom into 100% one more time so we can see what this is actually doing. Convert that to a normal map. And I want something with a bit more texture, a bit more sort of fine finesse on this one. 
So down in the timeline, one more time, instead of having our bump texture as this brushed metal, I'm going to come into my image file and let's find something a bit more interesting. We're going to use the metallic gold discs there. And look at that, that's looking nice. Um, if we don't want it this big, we, we can actually come into the texture track there and we can use the texture modifier to just scale this up or down a little bit. Uh, probably want to scale these both in unison. So if I say 80 and 80, let's see what that gives us. It's actually quite nice. Back into material attributes, reflectiveness. Let's turn the reflectiveness back up again. Let's turn the scale of that up as well. That eight bump strength. I'm actually, I quite like that um, large bump strength of that texture. All right, let's zoom this back out, fit to 100%. Let's turn on the other rings. Let's play that back. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. I sort of want this middle one, this white one, to be semi-transparent. So it's got, doesn't have a sort of look, won't have that look of, uh, of stone. So I'm going to come into my texture track here and I'm just going to take the opacity down. Just a little bit. Take that probably about, down to about 70, I think. Yeah. I think that's going to, that's going to look nice. And of course, we can play with this a bit more and sort of start to explore these a lot more. There's, there's so many things that you can do with the uh, materials. But again, if you're just sort of trying to get it to grips with what the materials are doing, there's no better place to do it than just having a look at all of these presets that we have available to us here. There's a lot of different new ones that have been uh, introduced over the last version. So uh, it's worth taking, taking a look at what they're doing. I'm sort of, I'm liking where that's, that's taking us, actually. It's definitely got promise, that's for sure. So I think we're going to take another quick break now. Let brains just cool down a little bit. And when we come back, we're going to add some more decorative things to our outer ring here and show you a nice efficient way of working with multiple objects. And it's going to be a much more straightforward exercise as well. So that's been our first look at materials and textures. And I will see you in part four, where we start to build on top of that. Thanks for watching and be sure to go to borisfx.com to download a free trial of Boris Continuum so you can try this out yourselves. If you want to see more of this type of tutorial or you have some ideas of your own, be sure to leave a comment below. Also, subscribe to the Boris YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on all the Boris FX products.